Welcome to Molly Love. We drive connection, community, acceptance across all cultures and generations. Just want to be very clear that all are welcome here and we are delighted and grateful to have you listening. You're about to join us for our weekly adventure where we chat with entrepreneurs, chefs, foodies, artists, humanitarians, and others who are helping us to connect and learn. We'd love for you to visit our YouTube channel where you can learn to make delicious guacamole, chimichangas, mocajetes de queso y chorizo fendido, crunchy tacos, enchiladas, flour tortillas, and so much more. Private message us if you need any help. We'd love to help you make these recipes successful. Please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review, and we'd love to hear from you. And from Mother Teresa, spread love everywhere you go and let no one ever leave you without being happier. So I'm going to be bringing on our very special guest in just a moment, but before she joins us, I wanted to tell you a little bit about her and a little bit about the organization that she volunteers for. So April 4th today, and this is the month of the child. So we are all being asked to focus on the needs of children and of their caregivers. So it's super appropriate that I have Laura Nuwa with us from Eli Home. She is a board member and she is going to be talking to us about a special fundraiser that they have actually going on today, as well as all the amazing work that this organization has been doing for decades to support abused women and children. So Laura is a board member. She's been volunteering for five years. She has dedicated her life to community service. She is passionate about contributing back to her community. She was born and raised in Chile, and she came to the U.S. in 1992. Growing up in Chile gave her a great exposure of the power of community, solidarity, to help those in need. In her years in college, she took a class called Community Service, in which she devoted a lot of hours of service. She was featured in the Dean's List of Orange Coast College, Laura then went into the professional world and earned a degree in accounting from Irvine Valley College while working full-time and raising a daughter and playing life. She has always worked in finance, in the finance world as an accounts receivable and credit manager for several different corporations. She has received outstanding volunteer certificates from One OC Foundation, National Philanthropic Association, Rookie of the Year in the United Way Angels Foundation Walk in 2002, and the High Five recognition for her volunteer work in Western Digital Finance Conferences. Laura is a daughter, sister, wife, mother, aunt, friend, colleague, and founder of the social club called Fun Chicas, a faith-based woman connection, a learner of life, friendly creature, a philanthropic soul, high positive spirit, and enjoying her passion to give back. In her spare time, she enjoys kayaking, dancing salsa, spending time with her daughter, planning events, and sharing great memories with family and friends. She loves to travel when she finds some time, and her favorite California destinations are San Diego and Catalina Island. Her motto, a giver's soul is a happier soul, keeps her going. And with that, I'd like to give a very warm welcome to Laura. Hola, how are you? And welcome to Mole Mama. Oh, thank you, Molly Mama. Thank you for having me in your podcast. I'm so, so grateful for this opportunity to spread the word about the Eli home. You know, it's, and it's, we just met at a function a few weeks ago. So I think it was destiny because it was perfect timing um, when yes. I found it was one of the child. So I'm like, okay, Laura, you have to come on and tell us about this because we need to hear more. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about more about Eli Home? I know they're in Southern California. Who do they help and and how do they help them? Well, the Eli Home is a faith-based organization in Anaheim, California. The Eli Home mission is to shelter and support homeless, abused children and mothers and to prepare them uh, to have a stable Nonviolent lives free from fear and intimidation to break the cycle of child abuse. And are they helping the children as well as the mothers? So they're helping both of them? Yes. Yes, they're helping both of them. And yes. do they have 
provide education or training or shelter? Or yes, all yes, 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 all of the above. They provide service, therapy, um, education for the mothers. Um, the Eli Home has been serving um, since 1983 uh, for 36 years. And they have helped about uh, 40,000 uh, kids and mothers uh, all together. That is a really significant mu- number of people that they have helped. That's fantastic. And how are they getting their funding? Where does that come well, from? The, the funding comes from um, different venues. Uh, we have fundraisings through the year. Uh, we have a thrift store uh, located in Anaheim. Uh, we also get uh, grants from corporations. And also we get the community to donate uh, money uh, to the Eli home. That's wonderful. And have you had any opportunities to, in your five years to work with the children? Yes. Um, I actually uh, work with them um, yesterday. Uh, they have a homeschool program for the kids, and I was there yesterday. But I, I had several situations um, through the year where I participated to the um, children's uh, Christmas branch um, that we have um, once a year and um, it's, it's just beautiful um, to be able to see the kids and meet the mothers and, and just spend time with them. That's fantastic. So how did you get involved with, with this volunteer organization? Well, I was invited five years ago by a friend uh, to volunteer at the golf tournament. And um, that was a great opportunity for me to meet the Eli Home team, um, the volunteers, and, and uh, see how well they run their organization. And I was very, very impressed with the Eli Home. And so um, my friend, Anna, um, told me, hey, they have a board retreat. Why you don't come around and, and, and listen to the Eli Home mission? And so I went on a Saturday and I spent all day uh, with them, and I found out that it was the right fit for me, and so I decided to join as a board member of the organization. And it, from your bio, it sounds like you're not new to volunteering, right? So this is, is that correct? <laughs> I call myself like a professional volunteer because I have volunteered so many different organizations like um, Chuck Hospital, uh, uh, Susan G. Common. I, I always do walks uh, with my daughter uh, to fund. I fundraise for um, different organizations. But when I found the Eli Home, I thought, well, this is the organization that I really belong to. I love the team, and so I decided to just focus pretty much on the Eli Home um, and and become more involved. And as a board member, really, really involved. I'm. I'm I'm an active board member. I'm not a um, a person that will sit. Uh, I just want to be um, active and doing things with the Eli Home. That's outstanding. So, what do you think has been the most rewarding part of volunteering? The most rewarding, I will say, is meeting the kids, um, talking to the mothers, and um, just meeting other volunteers and and hear their stories on how they became volunteers also with the Eli Home. And most of the volunteers for the Eli Home, they have years of service volunteering at Eli Home. They really, really love the mission and they're very passionate about the Eli Home. That's wonderful. So, so you, I'm gonna go back again to how, how did you get started in volunteering? Cause it sounds like you have a pretty full life. You're a mom. And you have children, and you're married. So I, I know that myself, um, I kind of volunteer in starts and stops. So I'll get involved and I'll do some stuff and then I get really, really busy and I can't. So how do you, how did you make time for this in your busy life? Oh, I, I just make it a point to just volunteer. Actually, I, I think I have it on my DNA. <laughs> I would tell people, why you volunteer so much? It's because I love it. I think it's such a joy to be able to, 
to give back. I'm so grateful uh, uh, to be uh, in this country, first of all, and, and just being able to give back to the community and being part of the community is, is, is a blessing. And um, I grew up in Chile, so um, in my country, uh, I grew up seeing the Don Francisco, which was my biggest role model, um, doing the telethon. And every time my country had a, a national disaster, um, everybody got together. So I believe in the power of community. I believe that together we can do so much uh, for our communities. But it's, it's, it takes it takes the passion and the effort to become involved uh, with with any organization, I'm not just talking to Eli Home, but in general, we can all get back and we can all contribute just a little bit. Yeah, I have done um, a couple different cooking events and, and that's one of the ways that I've, I've given back. Um, and I always do find it extremely rewarding, uh, but oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really in awe of somebody who's doing it it sounds like almost on a weekly basis or daily basis. <laughs> I actually I do it on a daily basis. It's kind of my DNA because when I introduce myself to people, I say, "Oh, I'm part of the board member of the Eli Home. Do you know about the Eli Home?" And people say, "No, I don't." Okay, let me tell you about it. So it's kind of like a, a I'm a, like a walking ambassador for the Eli Home. <laughs> That's fantastic. So can you share any stories? I know there's confidentiality and privacy, but can you share any of the stories of some of the women that have been helped or some of the children that have been helped? Um, I, I think well, our listeners well, would really find that interesting. Well, I'm going to tell you the story of Alex Jasso. Um, Alex Jasso was a children, uh, child of the Eli home 20 years ago. And today... He served as a treasurer and a board member of the Eli Home. And last year, he was accepted for his um, MBA uh, business um, degree uh, and the program in, in Stanford University. And, and he's an active volunteer. He comes to the meetings. Um, and, and he's just an amazing person. Him and his sister, they're both board members. And they were children's. As Alex say, the, the Eli home saved my life. And uh, it, it's just an amazing story. Every time I tell the story, people was like, wow, that's a great story to tell. That is a fantastic story to tell. So, you know, in talking about um, somebody like him, it sounds like there's others. If, you've, if the organization has helped more than 40,000 people in 36 years. So... Yeah. Um, we're going to take a really short break, and when we come back, we're going to hear more from Laura. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We're back. I'm here talking to Laura. She's a board member from the Eli Home Organization for Abused Children in Anaheim, California. Before our break, we were talking to her about some of her volunteer experiences. So, Laura, I was really interested to learn more about some of your experiences as far as um, your work that you do with the children and I know you post pictures on Instagram of them, and they're so cute, and it looks like they're drawing. And do they spill paint on you, or like what happens in those in when you're actually working with them? Yeah, so um, like I have a recent story. Yesterday, I was working with them, and since we're running the campaign, um, we were uh, putting little pieces of um, paper, like red paper, and a big heart that they we drove for them to. Um, contribute the pieces of papers and it, it's just so pretty um, uh, the listeners can go on Instagram we're being very busy with social media so they can see all the postings all, all, all the stuff that happened yesterday the stuff that happened today 
and um, it, it's just amazing. They're so cute and and they're so um, nice. And they were having a trouble yesterday pronouncing my last name, <laughs> and I told them it's okay. You know, Mrs. Mua, and I speak Spanish. I'm Chilena, and I was explaining to them, so they were like super happy uh, to hear um, more about uh, me and. I uh, also had the opportunity to meet the staff um, at the Eli Home uh, thrift store, and it was a great it was a great opportunity for me to know more about the women and some of the women that they go and work uh, at the Eli Home thrift store so they can get some skills, um, uh, cashier or uh, filling out um, the the um, the shelves and putting stuff in the shelves and and helping uh um in in the um running of the uh store and i was talking to sandra yesterday it was very very charming to talk to her and about her experience um as an abused mother and when he uh she left um the home and and got got a good place to live in the shelter of the Eli home. And, and she's so grateful for that opportunity. So just touching bases with the mothers, it makes me more passionate about being part of this amazing organization. It takes so much courage to leave. And it's, it's so remarkable that your foundation is providing shelter. Cause I think that's probably one of the scariest things, right? Where do you go? Um, right. And with 40,000, obviously lots of people have come through there. So, you know, what um, I, you mentioned earlier that the most rewarding part of the volunteer experience has been working with the children. Has there been any challenges as far as volunteering? Uh, for me personally, my biggest challenge is um is time because I, I mean, I try to give as much time I can possibly give, um, but I ha I'm a working mom, so I wish I can get more time so I can be able to go to to the store or the shelter or, or help around uh, around um, doing more volunteer work. So time for me is is one of the biggest thing of challenges that I see, but. Other than that, it's, it's just an amazing experience, just uh, being able to, to contribute to the Eli home. I think when we were chatting the other night, you mentioned that you would love to be a full-time volunteer <laughs> and have a job yes. that paid you. So I hope that comes. Well, I, I know for sure what I'm going to do when I retire. <laughs> so that's what I'll, I will do uh, when I retire. I definitely get more energy uh, to the Eli home and, and be more, um, more part of every, everyday uh, life um, situation with the, with the charity. But uh, right now I'm a working mom and I have to pay my bills and I have to maintain my home and take care of my daughter. Um, I have a 16 year old daughter, so uh, it, I, I'm a very busy uh, person, but that doesn't stop me from giving back. And um, I love it. I just simply love the, the, the opportunity. So can you share with our listeners any advice or words of wisdom if they're thinking about becoming a volunteer for Eli Home or any other organization? Like, what should somebody think about when they're considering volunteering somewhere? I think, um, I believe that you have to follow your heart in whatever um, organization that is out there, find them. Uh, reach out to them, uh, contact them, and say, hey, I'm available, and, and you can tell them when you're available. And um, in the case of the Eli Home, um, the listeners can go to the website, and they can put, um, they can click on contact us, they can put the, the name, uh, the email address, and a little message, oh, I'm willing to volunteer in, in this upcoming event, and, and just, just, just ask anybody can can give back it's it's just a matter of asking um the the organizations that are out there it's so many uh, the community needs help and and who better to help is ourselves you know and, and give back to our own communities so just reach out to the community you like um in this case i 
I continue to uh, reroute people to the website, uh, which is very important so they can see what uh, events are coming. Um, the website is very friendly um, and they can um, put a message and, and they contact us and, and say, hey, I want to volunteer for this event. Or I, uh, for people that own the business, they can become sponsors. You know, it's a lot of need for sponsors and charity, uh, the charity world. And um, if you're trying to um, to promote your business, that's a way, a good way to promote your business by, by becoming a sponsor. And for companies, you know, if somebody owns a company, uh, partnering with um, the Eli Home or any other organization creates a great relationship and also um, provides the funds. Uh, for the organization, and sometimes they have volunteers opportunity for the company, so it's a win-win situation because they can have a team building experience while helping the community. So I believe that um, it's just asking and and reaching out to any organization that you feel that is connected to you that fit fit your soul and 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 creates a, a, a better legacy for you and it creates a better purpose in life. So I, I believe that everybody has the opportunity. It's just a matter of saying, yes, I can, or I can those days, or I can in the weekend. Just just reach out to wh whatever organization you want um, to volunteer. So. Thank you for sharing that. I think that that's really wise. And that's I know that's what I've done. I've done a lot of um, uh, volunteer time at different um, just food shelters and um, you know sorting food and that kind of thing and, and as you were mentioning it is a really great team builder or I've done that with other teams that I've worked with and we've had so much fun and also just the idea that you're helping someone else and with some of my cooking that I've done um, I remember one of the one of the things that I remember it was a Thanksgiving dinner at a shelter and I showed up and I had my knife and I'm like, okay, I'm here. I've got really good knife skills and I, what do you need me to chop? And, <laughs> and I, and I, I was really naive. So the chef kind of looked at me and he saw my knife and he's like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give you onions. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll chop a few onions. Like I had bags <laughs> of onions. I was like, I was oh, crying so that's, much. Like, that's cute. Like, <laughs> just bags and bags and more bags of onions. Um, but he taught me how to cut some onions in different ways that I never even knew possible. But it was so rewarding when we were actually passing out the plates of food to people and to um, see just how grateful they were. And yeah. it was just yeah. an, it, it really was an amazing feeling and um I think there's so much that we gain when we're of service to others. Yes. Yeah. Everybody has talent. So find, uh, I mean, find a place where you can, you can thrive with your talents. And, and for example, sometimes I do fundraising. I mean, I'm from Chile, right? We have empanadas. So my mom cooked the best Chilean empanadas and I do fundraising to support the Eli home. And I saw with my friends and they love it. And it's a win-win. They get some food and some of the proceeds go to the Eli home, which is a great, great opportunity to, to, um, to fundraise as well. Okay. So you're holding out on us. I did not know that you, that you make empanadas. I love empanadas. <laughs> and so I'm going to take you some next time I'm going to your, uh, to your area. <laughs> Yeah, I, I need some of those. What kind? Of, what kind of empanadas do you make? Well, my my mom makes the Chilean empanadas, which has meat inside and uh, ground meat and and onions and and raisins and olives and eggs, and it's they're delicious. They call them the best Orange County empanadas, the Chilean empanadas. So uh, she has a a, a, a a group of people that um, they buy from her and, and they, they just love them. They, they absolutely love them. So, and my friends know about them. So when I do fundraising, they're like, oh, yes, I'm in. <laughs> so. That's 
Outstanding. So I've had Argentinian empanadas. I'm not sure I've ever had Chilean ones. Oh, you have to try my mom. They're the best. So I will take you some. <laughs> okay. So that, so see this, this I can totally relate to. My mother used to, for our, my school, so when I was growing up and all of, all my um, siblings, she would do um, enchiladas for the school <laughs> festivals. Oh. <laughs> Make. Yes dozens and dozens and get ladies into a room we would all be making enchiladas so yeah we like to make money with food that's good it works yeah <laughs> and especially when it's a good cause i mean people like them and they they, they feel that well they're helping and they're also eating so it, it's a good win win yes it is so how can our listeners support eli home that are are listening now Okay, so since right now is April, is Child Abuse Awareness Month, we're running the campaign, and um, we're, like, asking um, people for donations, monetary donations, and they can go to the um, www.elihome.org dash giving day dash, and we're running the campaign right now, and it's so exciting because the kids are putting the – the heart together, and and if it goes up, uh, the 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 heart will be fulfilled with all that little red red piece of paper. So we really really want the contribution: five dollars, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, whatever is appreciated. And it's, it it comes from love. It comes from the support of the community. Um, and check the pro- progress of the campaign and Instagram and Facebook. Um, they will love it. They will get inspired if they go into Facebook, the Eli Home Facebook, the Instagram page. Uh, we're also running the Twitter page. Um, they can go and check to get inspired uh, by the kids. Uh, but it, also another thing, uh, the golf tournament is coming up on May 13th. So we have 25 uh, spots for volunteers. We need golfers, uh, 100 golfers, and we um, we also need a sponsor. So if anybody wants to sponsor, uh, all the information is on the website, www.elihome.org, so they can find all the information in the website. Um, as I said before, it's a very friendly website. So all this information is there. They just have to click on the events, upcoming events, and everything will be there. And if they want to contact us, um, they can click on contact us and, and just put their name, uh, their email address, and the message, a little message saying, I want to volunteer, I want to be a sponsor, uh, I want to donate, or how can I know more about the Eli Home? Anything, all the, the, the information is in the website, uh, the mission, the vision, um, the people that um, the board members, the staff, it's a lot of information on the website that they can reach out to um, so they can uh, find out more about the Eli home. Yeah, I was checking it out earlier and it's it's such a beautiful site and the kids, you're right, the kids are so adorable. So, you know, the one thing we haven't talked about yet is how did the name come about, the Eli home? What did the name come from? The, okay, so that's a beautiful story. Okay, so the the since it's a base uh, faith based organization, the Eli Home was born in a Bible study. Um, Lori Galloway was uh, in a Bible study in her home with her husband, and she heard a story that touches her heart. So she decided to to tell her husband, okay, from now on, I will dedicate my life to this organism, to the, I'm going to start the Eli home and you, you, you continue working. I will dedicate my life to the Eli home. And the Eli is in the Bible, um, the name Eli. So, um, it's, it, that's how it started. And she started reaching out to people, uh, volunteers, um, friends, family to support her efforts. So, she she's been working very very hard for 36 years and and it's amazing what she has done with this nonprofit um she has people that has worked for over 30 years when you go and volunteer you you feel that it's your home you feel that it's your family that you want to come back 
to volunteer again and again and again. I, I have a lot of friends that have volunteered with the Eli Home, and they say, Laura, when is the next event? So I want to volunteer. Or oh, some of them volunteer once a year, but they know that that day is coming, and they come over to volunteer. So I, I have very good stories about volunteers loving the experience. So um, I believe that... Um, Volunteers are, are the key for a nonprofit organization because they're the heart. They're the heart. They make it continue with the mission of the Eli Home, as well as the board member. But I feel the volunteers are extremely important um, to continue uh, the mission of any organization. And I, I want to share a particular a message, um, a quote from the Lori Galloway that uh, is the founder of the Eli Home, and it's very touching, and it touched my heart, and I keep it on on my wall, so I always remember. Um, it says right like this, and and especially for volunteers, it says, "When we give our hearts, we change lives, and we and bring out the best in others. When we give our hearts, we change lives." and bring out the best in others. And it's so true. I mean, I have come to, out of my comfort zone to learn new things just because I'm part of the um, Eli Home um, board member. And, and for me, it has changed my life. I see life differently now um, after hearing the stories, after um, listening to some of the board members' stories. Uh, I, I just love this organization so much, and I'm so passionate. I strongly believe that the power of community can do miracles, and I believe that we can all impact together. Um, so I, I encourage everybody to to visit the website, stay tuned, check our Facebook page, check our Instagram page, uh, check the Twitter page. We are even in LinkedIn too. So um, if anybody's interested to learn more about the Eli Home, everything is out there at the open. So thank you for sharing all that. So the story that um, she shared that kind of changed her life to start this nonprofit was that a story about abuse? Yes, that? domestic violence yes. abuse. Yes, and that's what drove her to kind of stop and and I think that's such a beautiful story because I think it really just takes one person to start something and to have the vision, and then it's amazing at where it could go. And now she's helped the organization has helped forty thousand people. That's yes. an amazing story. It really yes. is. So, um, so many lives. It sounds like it. It really sounds like it has helped a lot of different people. Is there an age range for the children? Are are more of them young? Are some of them teenagers? Is it just varied? Mm, it varies, but it, it runs between, I will say, um, uh, one to twelve about that range age range so yeah is um some of the kids i have seen um that's the age range all right so we have been talking about how the eli home organization got started and we're going to take another quick break and we'll be right back We're talking to Laura, a board member from the Eli Home in Anaheim, California, and we were talking about volunteering and how the organization got started. And you know, I have another question for you. So I know that you're having a, a fundraising drive right now, and for our listeners who you know, it sounds interesting, but maybe they don't have the money. Um, are there other ways that people can volunteer to Eli Home? Yes. And we receive in-kind donations, uh, which there are for the thrift store that we have in Anaheim. So people can donate um, um, canned food items, 
They can donate office supplies um, if they have extras. Um, they can donate um, uh, gentle clothing um, pieces. Uh, so if they have extra clothing, they want to donate it. For if they have children and they want to get rid of do some spring cleaning, uh, they can donate that as well. Um, so that's an, another option for the listeners to to donate and be part of the um, the this organization and support the organization. And um, can they do can they do anything else? Um, do you need anything any other types of items? Yes, and. Sometimes uh, we need professional service, that, uh, somebody who has the skill as a handyman, for example, and wants to uh, donate their time, and they're very good uh, fixing light bulbs, or they're good painting a room. Um, we, we always need the service um, for, to repair the shelter or repair the thrift store. So they can always ask uh, what is needed at the moment. Um, it's it's always a way to help. It it's just I have to reach out to the Eli home um, and contact us and 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 extend their 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 goods and um, service to to the Eli home. That's another way to to contribute. Okay, and people can stay connected with you by following um, you on Instagram and cute pictures of really cute kids and Facebook mm-hmm. and go to your website. And, you know, I wanted to share with our listeners that um, I think I've talked about my childhood and growing up on a farm and there wasn't a lot of money. And um, every Christmas for many, many years, um, mm-hmm. our local church would come and bring us presents on Christmas And I remember being a child and how grateful, excited, I didn't use that word, I'm sure, but but just like how much it meant to me, how much it meant to my mom. So, you know, if you're thinking about donating to Eli Home or any other organization, it really does impact the people that are the recipients of whatever it is that you can give, if it's your time, if it is something But, you know, as we were talking before, Laura, that whole idea of giving to others and being of service to others is just, it's such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so you have a daughter. So is is she also following um, in your footsteps or does she go volunteering? (laughs) or? Yes, uh, she's 16, and as a board member, I have the opportunity to take her with me um, sometimes to the event. I, she has volunteered for the Christmas branch um, on, on Christmas time, and uh, she likes it. She really enjoys uh, doing that, and we have volunteered. One time we had um, an event in South Coast Plaza here in Orange County, and we just have to pass. Um, flyers to people in the mall and she really enjoyed doing that as well so as she gets older she will get more exposed um, to the volunteer work but she totally support my my efforts and she feels uh, proud of her mom doing that and 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 she loves it she she loves to see the pictures um she sees them all and likes all my instagram posts so Yes, she's very, very um, happy that I'm involved with the Eli home. So, Laura, so let's talk a little bit about you and your volunteering passion, because it's definitely something you're very passionate about. So how do you think volunteering has changed your life? And why do you think it's important? It, I think as a human being has made me grow and see the world from a different perspective, because I have a good life. I believe that I have a roof, I have food, I have a husband, a daughter, I have my parents, they live close. I have a good uh, circle of family and friends around me, but uh, uh, seeing it from from their perspective, it kind of opens my heart and my eyes to see what is out there and what people need um, uh, from us to help. Um, And extending a helping hand, it's something we all should do. 
and I'm I'm a strong believer at, of uh, giving back. So as I said before, but it has changed me. It has totally um, made me appreciate life more, and maybe it gives me um, the opportunity to give back. But at the same time, being grateful for what I have in my life. So as a human being, you grow so much uh, giving back, and it's such a joy that. It's indescribable when when you do it over and over and over again. It's like adrenaline going through your you know veins, and it's like oh yes, and 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 just excited about every event. Uh, so it, it it makes me feel that um, a, a sense of purpose in life, a bigger purpose in life, and and that to me is just priceless. And do you think that um, you're going to be doing this? Sounds like this is your retirement path. <laughs> so do you think you'll ever? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I will never quit. I will never quit volunteering. And I have been approached by other friends and um, and their nonprofit and say, hey, Laura, can you come uh, and, and be my board member? I'm like, oh, I'm very busy with the Eli home, but I can give you so much boxes. So, yes, um, I have so much experience now that uh, people come to me and, and, and ask me, what, it, what about this? What about that? And I'm like, and I guide them and I help them. And as a volunteer, too, I know the in and out of being a volunteer and how you can become involved. And I tell people about the different ways. So it, it's just, again, it's part of my DNA. I, I cannot change Um uh, the way I, I run my life now uh, with the volunteer work. So, so I know that you we talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the show, and you know you you work full time. Your mom, you have all these commitments, and you still make time. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering for anybody that's listening, do you have any suggestions of how you make the time? Is it you know, just saying I'm going to do it once a week or how did you? How do you do that? How do you carve out that time so that you can? Well, one thing I I I don't do, um, and people think I'm crazy, but I don't watch too much TV. Um, so I, with that say, I I hardly unless it's a movie, I watch a movie, but I don't watch TV. Uh, my life is is being out and about, and I call myself Laura on the go. I'm always doing <laughs> something. <laughs> Laura on the go, yes, that's who I am, pretty much. But uh, I don't, I, I, I feel that I, I need to be involved. I need to uh, make changes. I need to make an impact. And um, it, it's just, again, it's part of my DNA. I just, I, I just can't stop that. It, it makes me happy, a, a happier person. So I think that Laura on the go needs to be your hashtag. <laughs> One of the hashtags. <laughs> you use because it's <laughs> darling and I think yes. it's so inspiring what you're doing and and honestly I I people think I'm weird too I I don't watch tv very much at all uh, we actually had guests in the house and I don't even know how to turn on the tv downstairs without my husband so um yeah. but I think you know it's very admirable what you're doing and you can hear the joy, you can hear the passion in your voice about what you're doing and what you're giving back. And, and so it's just absolutely inspiring, inspiring for me. I'm sure it's inspiring for our listeners. And so I hope to see that the Laura on the go, cause that's very cute. Okay. And, I, and I, I'm afraid that, you know, other other nonprofits are probably trying to steal you because you are, it sounds like, so active. And they might also have found out about your mama's empanadas. So they think, you know, yes. if, they get, if they get Laura, they're going to get those too. Yes, they love my mama empanadas and the salsa, the Chilean salsa called Pebre. They love it. Everybody's like, oh, when is your mama's going to do another round of empanadas? I'm like, oh, soon. So... Yeah, it, it's, it's, they're, they're delicious. And not because they're my mom empanadas, they're really delicious. Some people um, come from Vegas, they come into the area in Orange County, and they take uh, two dozens to Vegas. And you will think, wow, Vegas has so many restaurants, right? 
but they know my mom and panadas and they they just love them and they take it home they put it in the refrigerator they last you know about a week and they heat them up as they they go so um they're just delicious um but they're my mom and panadas <laughs> Well, and, and you spoke a few minutes ago, too, about your daughter volunteering, and I think that's so important. One of the things um, my sons in the schools that they went to, it was a requirement that they had to do so many hours of service, of community service, and I love that. I wish all of our schools had that as a requirement yes. for children. To, yes. Don't you? I mean, just to give back to their own communities and I think to grow up with that spirit of community and giving back yes i agree i think our our new generations need more of the community involvement um i I believe there's such a a, such a good uh out coming us after volunteering so it's a good experience for for them and if they don't have any work experience that's a great experience to 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 see how it is to work in an event and how to deal with people and 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 just it's just an overall a uh, uh, a very rewarding experience for uh, teenagers. So uh, yes, I definitely feel that a school should be implementing and, and adding more hours to community service. But, but that's just my my belief. Um, I did it in community service in college, and I was very very happy to do that there. And it was a class called community service. So um, I, I was very happy that I did that. That's really outstanding. Yeah, I've, um, like I said, my son's schools, they they had to do it. And um, I remember they, they did all kinds of things. Uh, and as far as different services, and, and one of the times my older son's, he cooked a bunch of my mom. My mom used to make this Mexican lasagna with like sour cream instead of sauce. And mm. oh, had- yummy! You're making me hungry. Mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's usually what I do. Um, it's in my DNA. And um, <laughs> he made so much of it, and he was. I just remember. I can still remember seeing his face. He was so excited when we dropped it off at the food shelter and. Yeah, it's, I think it's really important for us as parents to try to help our children understand the importance of giving back to their communities. So yeah. um, I, I do. Okay, so we only have a few moments left, and I, I wanted to ask you, you know, if you could wave your magic, magic wand and, you know, have this volunteer job in the future, would it be with one organization or a whole bunch or what do you think you would do? Or like when you're retired, so, you know. So my dream goal uh, is, of course, com- uh, continue with the Eli Home because that's my main um, um, organization. But I have a vision to partner in with other nonprofit organizations um, in the same arena of women and, and children's. And I don't know, just uh, become an advocate for them as well and um, advisory um, or some sort of supporting. Um, it's, it's another organization that I really, really like that is all uh, teaching women of um, uh, technology. And, and that's, that's something that I feel very uh, passionate about technology because I came from the technology world. I was working for Western Digital for many years. So um, I, I really like the technology. I think technology is a good thing to teach women uh, other skills. Um, so that's another organization that um, I, I really enjoy. That's outstanding, and I agree with you. It's those are really important skills for everyone, and and especially for moms, and when they're trying, they're single moms trying to support children for sure. And um, I know that I used to volunteer many, many years ago for an organization that um, taught women some basic technology skills as well as volu- um, interviewing skills. Um, right. Because for me, it was really surprising. Um, how many women had not actually done a job interview before or knew how to do a job interview. So, yeah. So 
You're inspiring me. You're inspiring me to find more time to do this more consistently. <laughs> <laughs> so no, so no. How can I be like Laura? Laura's really busy. So how is she doing? <laughs> uh, said, Laura on the go. Yeah. I, I, I like that. I, really I like, like that. that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. Yeah, you just help me with, it, yeah, with my it. hashtag. No, I, I definitely think you should use it. And for our listeners, can you just share one other one last time how we can stay stay engaged uh, with what's happening at Eli home and, and how, how to get involved. Uh, website, go to the website, uh, follow, follow the Eli home on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And for those professionals, um, they, they can also find um, the Eli home page on LinkedIn. Um, so those are the ways that they can continue getting, uh, being engaged to the Eli home and what's going on with the Eli home. And of course, they can follow my page because I'm always posting what's going on with the Eli home. And um, yeah, it, that's the way to continue engage with um, my organization. Okay, so on Instagram, it's the Eli home because I remember the first time I had to find you I forgot about the the so for our listeners yeah the, yeah, yeah. the uh, Eli home the, the so Eli home. Yeah. and Eli is spelled E-L-I for those of you also listening um, so yeah. Laura yeah. thank you muchísimas gracias for coming oh and- gracias a ti por tenerme <laughs> thank so- you so much muchas gracias es un placer estar um, en tu podcast Y me gustó compartir mi, 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 mi historia. I, I love to share my story with, um, my volunteer story with you guys and, and the Eli home. And I love listening to you speak Spanish because you speak it so beautifully. It's not like, oh, oh. It's like mine because I was born here. But again. I, I came to United States when I was 20. So I grew up, I grew up, raised in Chile. And then I had a plane ticket and I, I, I follow my dad, and and I just came. I'm the first generation uh, immigrant from my family, woman immigrant from my family. That's outstanding. Well, thanks again for being here. And I want to thank all of our listeners. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember to add the most important ingredient to every recipe you make your love. And as my mama always said to me as we said our goodbyes, que Dios te bendiga, may God bless you. I want to thank our producer, Ade. Thank you for tuning in to Molly Mama Cooking with Love.